Well, hello, my perpendicular potato peelers. Today, let's talk about something that could be considered a little bit on the controversial side of this hobby, shall we say. We're going to talk about plastic and why it belongs in the hobby. Scandalous! Now, you're probably going to hear mostly from collectors who have been collecting for a long time or flippers who've been flipping for a long time that plastic doesn't have a place in the hobby. Look at it. It's too light. It's too toy-like. It's just toys. They're not meant to be here. Well, as somebody who has been collecting since about 2014, I would like to say, with my own two cents, I welcome plastic into the hobby for multiple reasons. Now, maybe I haven't been flipping as long as I've been collecting, but I would have loved this kind of stuff to introduce myself into the actual flipping side of this hobby way, way back when I started collecting. Maybe I would have started flipping earlier. Maybe it would have been a great gateway for me. And that's one point of why I like plastic. Let me get into the rest of it. And also forget the ketchup. Don't don't look at the ketchup. It's it's still there from last video. Anyways, now that the ketchup is gone, I think I can kind of keep my thoughts more straight uh, without getting distracted as much. So what was I talking about? I was talking about why I welcome plastic into the hobby. Now there's five main points that I believe justify plastic being in the hobby. Cost, availability, it's light, it's safe, and you can travel with it usually. It's easier to travel with at least. Uh, there, there could be complications, but we'll get into that when we get there. Now let's start with cost. I think cost is a great place to start when talking about the plastic of the hobby, I think. So how much did these cost? None of these were over $100. All of them sub $100. Now, 100 sounds like a lot, but when it comes to ballad songs, 100 is not a lot. It doesn't stretch very far. Now, currently, there are some things that are metal that are sub-100, but there's different benefits between metal and plastic in that kind of a range, so it's good to have these options, and the fact that they are still significantly under $100, that's not too bad. How much did these cost? Uh, $55, $60 US, depending on if you have shipping covered or where you bought it from. Some of them have some different parts on them that make them more expensive. Uh, maybe just ignore this one. This one's uh, discontinued, so just don't worry about that. Both of these, $75 US dollars. These have a lot of handcraft put into them as well. And also, in my opinion, I just, I think that they are better. There's a lot more going on with them that makes them better as plastic flippers. But either way, none of these were over $100, at least brand new. Now, maybe for this one, just don't take any of the cost, whatever I'm saying, into account for the most part for its new price because it's discontinued. You're not going to find these brand new anymore unless it's secondhand. So everything is dictated by the secondhand market on these now. Now, because it's plastic and discontinued, sometimes they go for really, really cheap because people are just like, oh, it's plastic and it's discontinued. Whatever, that means nobody really wanted it. However, because it is discontinued and it's made by Squid Industries, which is a bigger company, some people like to really jack up the price a lot more than they should for it. In fact, I've seen some of these in pristine condition, just completely new going for absurd money, like over $100 if it has the box and everything with it. However, I have also seen them in that condition with all the stuff going for under retail. So ultimately, price doesn't matter. Whatever it was sold as new, it doesn't matter. This thing is dictated by the secondhand market and whoever decided to sell it that day. So just don't worry about the cost there. Just use it as a collector piece. It's not anything to do with whatever I'm talking about right now. Anyways, these ones, their price is a little bit more stable because they're technically in production. I mean, they technically could change the price however they want to whenever if they really wanted to, but for the most part, they've stayed stable. And this is information for Thursday, January 25th of 2024. If any of this information changes in the future, uh, I'm sorry, I can't control what the people do in the future. That's just not what I can do. So speaking of being in production, let's talk about availability, shall we? Not available, not normally available, seldom seen even on the secondhand market. So uh, in production, still being made. Very, well, it kind of actually depends. 
This is the most available one. You can kind of get these just whenever you want for the most part. I haven't seen them out of stock, like actually out of stock for quite a while. They're usually in stock. This is a Flipforge edit. I'm not entirely sure how the ordering process is currently, but for the most part, it seems that people are able to just order them for the most part whenever they want. Made by Flipforge, by the way, if you want to keep up on that, just go follow Flipforge on Instagram. Tay Calico. They used to be very easy to get an order in back when they were a little bit newer. Lately, it's been a little bit more difficult. Hopefully, when Tay is feeling better, they'll be more available again because I really, really, really like these actually. But for now, let's just say that they're available and leave it at that, even if it's a little bit complicated. So anyways, let's talk about weight, shall we? They're light. They're plastic. It's about what you would expect for plastic. This one comes in at the heaviest at about three ounces, mostly because the maker of this one, the edit, puts in metal rods into the handles and also the blade just to give it that little extra oomph that something like a metal trainer would have. There's a lighter variant that's called the Edit Light that the dude also makes. This is a Squiddy B. It comes in at about 2.6 ounces. There's a Squiddy U, which is a blue variant, but it's the same materials, just a different color, same weight. There's the Squiddy, which is made of PVC, a variety of PVC. And that's even lighter at about 2.2 ounces, I think I remember that's what the weight was. Very light, uh, a little bit awkward actually. Wouldn't recommend it for $45. This, the Calico, comes in at about 2.4 to 2.6 ounces. I have heard that there's a little bit of variance, but that's expected in things that are made of plastic and kind of handmade as well. Small variances, nothing too big. And uh, oh, hold on a second. Nice lube. So while we're coming back, the Squiddy C. C being clear. This one is made of polycarbonate, which is a type of acrylic. This is a material known for being strong, but also very light. It's used for things like windows, replacements for glass that's stronger and won't shatter as easily, sort of. But because it's supposed to be lightweight, it comes in at a very light 2.2 ounces. This thing is very light, it flips a little bit awkward, but it's light, just like plastic would be expected to be. But light isn't always bad. This one may be a little bit because it's awkward how light it is, but for the most part, for these ones, light isn't necessarily bad because when you're just starting out, you don't have like the finger strength necessary for using something like a metal trainer. It's very different because it's heavier, but You'll get up to that if you start practicing with these. So it's a great intro to flipping if you wanna get there. And of course, as you probably would have expected, they're pretty safe to use. They're plastic, there's not a live blade on them, nothing too sharp. Now, if you break it, maybe it'll be a little bit sharp and uncomfortable, but that's a whole different problem if you break it. That's not related to the fact that they are what they are. They're not inherently sharp. You're not gonna hurt yourself or anyone else for the most part with these. It's plastic, it's basically a toy, and that's not a bad thing. So that's a good benefit of them. They're safe for people, whoever wants to start. You're gonna have something to start without hurting yourself and making you wanna quit. And speaking of safe, for the most part, they're TSA kinda safe-ish. It can be a little bit iffy. I've heard of people having these confiscated even, even though clearly with what it is, they're see-through, they're clear, you can see where the metal is, it's definitely not something dangerous. However, they have been confiscated before. There's technically one that is considered TSA safe, that is the original PVC C Squiddy. That thing is usually considered TSA safe because it has the least amount of metal. These pins in the back, they're tiny, it doesn't have a nose pin, but also they suck, so uh, take and give where you want. But despite being the cousin to the Squiddy, these ones like the Squiddy B, Squiddy U, Squiddy C, Squiddy G, if for some reason you have one of those, or Squiddy A, any of these plastic Squiddies, uh, they can be a little bit iffy. I've had this one come through before because it was in a pocket that I didn't know it was in and somehow it came through both on my way out and my way home. 
but I wouldn't risk it if you don't want to lose it because these have been confiscated before as well as these as mentioned. This one? Don't bring the through TSA. Seriously, just don't. This one I've heard of people having confiscated relatively often. Why? Because it's got metal. It's got a lot of metal in it. And that's gonna look really, really weird on the x-ray. They're copper rods, and that looks suspicious. This one I haven't really heard too much about. Most people seem to get through with it, I think, from what I've seen, but I don't know for sure. Still wouldn't risk it. But the good thing about these being mostly plastic is that if you put them in your check baggage, they usually go through, as I've heard. So if you want to bring these anywhere, bring them in your checked, and it's easier to bring than a metal one to places that you probably shouldn't even bring the metal ones to to begin with. Now let's talk about the construction a little bit, shall we? I think that's a good thing to talk about at least. This one, this one, all the squid plastic ones, they're milled. They are solid chunks and they are milled. So in a lot of ways, they're actually stronger than say the 3D printed ones. These are 3D printed. There's a lot of 3D printed ones out there. These ones are, as far as I know, the only true plastic ones, not G10, that are milled. They are stronger inherently because of that, though it can be a little bit iffy with like this one. I, there's some cracks happening up here, but you know, it's polycarbonate, it still cracks even if it is stronger. So let's talk about construction, shall we? I think construction would be a good thing to also talk about in a video about the plastic ones. 3D printed, milled. There's a little bit of a difference here, obviously. These can be a little bit more fragile. These ones can kind of be stronger, but it's still plastic and things can happen. This one specifically, polycarbonate. It can crack. While technically it is strong, it also still cracks. But for the most part, it's stronger than 3D printed on an average day because it is one solid piece, every part, each handle is a solid piece, the blade is a solid piece. So technically it will be stronger, but it still cracks. This one, this one's made of acetyl or acetal, depending on how you want to pronounce it. I haven't really heard anybody properly pronounce it. I've heard it both ways. This one is much stronger than that because this is a thermoplastic that is durable. I haven't seen a lot of these cracking. However, there have been incidents in the past where they do crack over time. And that's probably normal because if you're dropping this a lot, that's a lot of stress being put on like up here, here at the pins, the weight pins, that's stress and that can cause it to crack. Squiddy G's can crack. I've seen a lot of those cracked. I haven't seen anything for Squiddy A's yet just because they're probably newer, but I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. Plastic also degrades over time, so maybe it'll get more brittle. We'll see. Also, yes, I did put jimping on my Squiddy B because when I was first learning, it kind of helped a lot with things like learning ladders when I wanted something lighter to use. And then uh, it didn't matter anymore because this guy came into my life. I got a tape flipper calico. I love this thing. It feels more standard. It's a more standard shape for the most part. It's got a good balance. It's just really good for everything. I learned how to scissor on this. I learned how to do all kinds of things, ladders, giraffe kind of halfway learned it there this is a great plastic piece it's just 3d printed so i have seen people crack them before but it's mostly well made i love almost everything about this thing it's got a thick blade so it doesn't crack i haven't seen people crack a blade the handles are unfortunately the weakest joint on this thing it's got zen pins I don't know how those are going to hold up over the next few years. But something else cool about this, and kind of extends to the squiddies, it's got a silencing thing. It's a little silicone dot that it kind of keeps it from clacking really loudly because plastic clacks extremely loud. Silencing mods are great. This thing is loud without these. I have accidentally had one of these fall out before, and it was loud when I was flipping it. Now these guys have a little O-ring around the nose pin. That keeps them kind of quiet, but it's not as effective as this one. This one's significantly more quiet, not a huge difference, but it is more quiet than the Squiddy. Now this guy's a little bit of a different beast. While it is still 3D printed, this one is made of PETG. This one is made of PLA+, which shatters a little bit easier. This is the same plastic that's used in soda bottles, and we all know how tough those can be. 
This one is relatively strong. The ones that do crack usually crack along where the spindle fibers are kind of jointed together. So if it's cracking, usually it's because there's an inherent flaw in the actual thing from its manufacturing process. But for the most part, this is a strong plastic balisong, though I do have some gripes. So there's actually a lot to talk about in terms of construction with these guys. This is called the edit because they're kind of a thing that you edit together yourself. On the website where you order these, you can customize everything from the blade shape. There's a crescent blade. I have the Tonto one. You can have face jimping or nothing at all there. Jimping on the side, I think is not an option unless they've changed that recently. The speed channels on the handles, these guys do get changed. There's a few different types of speed channels that you can get implemented into these. And also on the faces, there's these channels. Dots, just a straight line I believe was another option or just plain. Oh, there is some side jimping on this side. I forgot about that, but a lot of this is customizable to your preferences and whatever you think looks coolest. And the cool thing about this one, this is the first one with mismatched handles. I actually was talking with the guy who does this for Flipforge. We were talking about how doing mismatched handles would be a little bit too much of a time sink for cost and such, but he came around eventually to me asking about it because lo and behold, he had a week kind of to himself. And then at the end of that week, he showed me that he made a white handle for me. And he said, maybe, it's a good idea to start doing this for everybody too, because part of the philosophy of the edit, making it personalized to yourself, colors are also important. You can get a lot of colors for the handles and you can get a lot of colors for the blade and it just fit the philosophy of the edit to do mismatch handles. So this is the first mismatch handle one that was officially made. So that's kind of cool, I think. And also if you take a closer look up here at the blade, some of it is hand sanded. This has been hand sanded to be a little bit more smooth rather than having that 3D printed kind of spindle texture to it. And the handles also have a little bit of that kind of more rounded over here, softer on the edges. And it does feel very comfortable, I will say that. However, I do have a small minor gripe that is entirely mine, not for everybody. A lot of people love this and for good reason, but I will say, my gripe just to have it out there. So as you can see when it's in my hand, this thing is huge. In fact, let me show you how big it is. This is a Kraken. This is a more standard size Balasong. Look at it next to each other. They are a very noticeable difference in size. It's more noticeable in hand and in person, but this thing is significantly larger. In fact, if we're talking about in comparison to actual metal ones, do you remember my 50? Well, they're about the same size in almost all directions except for in total length. This one's a little bit longer, but it's like a 50 but plastic, and this one is considered chunky. So basically what I'm trying to say here about this one is, if you have smaller hands, smaller fingers in general, maybe this one's not for you. It feels good weight-wise currently, with the way that they're made. It's just, for me personally, it gets a little bit awkward just because of how big it is. I can't do a lot of dexterity dependent things like techie flipping just because of how big it is. But a lot of people do actually really like these. So by no means am I trying to say that this is discredited from being a great ballad song. It's just not for me. So keep that in mind when you're looking for one. If you want it for the variety of your collection, then by all means, go for it. But if you're just going to go for one thing, maybe keep that as a consideration for yourself. Now, after that rant about why it's not for me, you might be thinking after reading the title of the video, oh, but aren't you supposed to be justifying all this plastic in the community? Why did you go on about why this isn't for you? Well, that's part of the whole point that I'm going for. Everything here is versatile in terms of things like design, weight, everything, the way that people are trying to innovate these things. There's so much variety. It's so cool how you have all these different things and they all have a different flipping experience. So if you want to go for everything, try everything, this is a great way to kind of expand your abilities and what you can adapt to just because they're all very different. 
all of these I have to flip in a very different way just to get them to move how I want. And that's fun. Maybe not for everybody, but also that means that there could be a style for everyone. This isn't for me. I love this, but some people prefer this over that. And some people prefer this. Everything is different for everybody. And I think that's a great part about the plastic in our copy. The fact that there's so much variety, it means that everybody can have something. And that's why I love them. To a degree. And I'm sure, despite everything I said, whether rambly or concise, there's going to be a lot of people who are still going to think along the lines of, Oh, but it's still plastic. It's just plastic in a knife hobby. They're just toys. They're not knives in the knife hobby. It has to be a knife in the knife hobby. If it's not a knife, it's not valid. Well, I got some news for you. Things change. Whether you like it or not, things change. While there are the initial weapon-like ones, there's also these plastic ones that are safe. And I know that there was a gun that was made to look like a toy. This is a thing that caused some issue. However, there's also Nerf guns, and those are considered safe, and people bring them out in public all the time, usually without issue. Now, guns are a little bit more of a different topic in general. They're also more dangerous, but if there can be a distinction between real guns and Nerf guns, why not also make very toy-like ballad songs for people who want to get into the skill side of the hobby. And then we can leave the knife stuff as a whole different segment. Why not have both? It happens for guns. Why can't we have that for knife? Things change. Let's change it for these two, shall we? But of course, just like with nerf things, just make sure that if you have kids, they're aware of what they're doing. And if you are a kid, just be safe. Don't know better. Listen to your parents. And if you are a parent, you should know better about things. Make sure your kids are safe. Don't just do things that are unsafe for your kids. You should know better, especially as an adult. If you're an adult, you should know better about safety. Don't let your kids do unsafe things. Don't let people who don't know better do things that are unsafe. Oh, geez, this is unsafe. I'm one of the unsafe people who needs plastic. Uh, so anyways, uh, that all aside, plastic. It has a place in the community. It has a place being made. I would have loved to have these when I was first starting collecting because maybe I would have started flipping sooner. Unfortunately, it wasn't there, but I'm glad that people who are just starting now have this as an option. I think that it's got its place. It's helping to normalize flipping a little bit more because these things, they're not like guns. It's a whole different world. They're less dangerous but they are really good skill toys for people who want to get into something like this. And I think that plastic is a great gateway to help other people who are not in the hobby realize maybe these things are more than just a knife. Maybe we should have a little bit more nuance to our laws and maybe we shouldn't just outright ban anything that looks like this, just like Nerf guns. It'd be great to get things that are actually toy-like to people who can't get the real knives. Because not everybody wants it for the knives. A lot of people, especially now in the current community, they want these because of the toy aspect. So why not give it to them? There's nothing wrong with having more people in the community. More people means we're driving more innovation, more products, normalizing it more for people to see that it's not just weapons. It's an art. It's a skill toy. It's so much more. Anyways, I think it's getting a little bit rambly at this point, and I think I've made my point about why these belong in the hobby, so uh, if you get one of these, just oil it, do your regular maintenance, just like any other ballad song. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Like and sub something if you want to. I put these at the end because if you're still here, clearly you enjoyed something, and I don't want to clog up the beginning with whatever that is, and uh, outro?